Pat, we've still got you in uh, Brisbane. This is, I understand, because of border issues. You're not actually blocked at the moment from going between WA and Queensland, but you had no faith that the Labor governments of McGowan and Palaszczuk would give you proper egress. Is that right? Not quite, Tom. Um, my wife is from <laughs> Brisbane uh, and we are finally here uh, to introduce our new baby, Ruby, who is now 11 weeks old, to the family. We uh, had hoped to do it in January, uh, but unfortunately, uh, the unpredictable Borders coronavirus went. had other plans. So, and the need to keep people safe, both in Queensland and Western Australia and across Australia. Uh, so we are now here uh, visiting family, which is delightful. But I also had to see my other family, and that is yourself, Tom, and Jason. So it's great to be with you. <laughs> Happy to be included. In fact, when do we get to meet? Is it Ruby? Yeah. Uh, you're, you're very high on the list, Jason, and uh, hopefully Thank the you. whole show Thank will you. be there in March. Mate, I've got a gift. It's going stale, so get down here quickly. Stale. <laughs> It's obviously not for the baby. I don't think they get food at that stage. Is the possum name actually living on in your um, amongst your children, Patrick? Uh, she she is very lucky that uh, uh, she has not got my middle name, but she has got my wife's middle name. So it's Ruby Elizabeth, uh, which is uh, good for her, and uh, probably limits the number of jokes you can make about our family names. <laughs> All right. So I'll... bad for us then, Patrick. Is that your point? Well, you can, you, you can uh, fire all your jokes at me, Jason. Just one target. You can. Uh, the kids uh, <laughs> are lucky enough to have more more common no. middle names. I think we've used a quarter of the panel to, oh, to do this oh, so far. Shame. So you can judge whether or not it's um, well moderated. It's probably easy to judge. Let's talk about Facebook by Jason Falinski. I went on today. It's a bit of a wasteland. Um, I've got to admit there's a couple of people I went to primary school with who love a conspiracy theory, and I'm seeing even more of their posts now. Oh, are you? Oh, well. Um, well, look, Tom, I, I encourage everyone who's looking for good news today to not type in facebook.com, but to type in skynews.com.au. That's what they should do. Hard to argue. Patrick, any um, issue here for Labor? Um, some people are criticising the government's handling of this. Is this all on Facebook, considering Google managed to, you know, find a couple of spare dollars amongst a, a few mm. well, trillion of company worth? Well, I'm not privileged to all of the negotiations the government have had with the various online platforms, but I am disappointed in Facebook. Uh, this is incredibly childish. It is hard to believe that they have actively silenced uh, political leaders, indeed, in Western Australia. Uh, I'm, I'm not his number one fan, but Zach Kirkup, the state opposition leader, has had his Facebook page shut in the middle of an election. Now, this is not... Uh, an open, free, democratic action by Facebook. Um, they've silenced one of my state Labor members, Amber Jade Sanderson, a rising star of the Labor Party in Western Australia, and they've silenced people like the Telethon Kids Institute. I mean, uh, whatever Facebook were trying to mm. do, um, they've done it in the most stupid and silly way. They need to undo this as soon as possible, and they also need to apologise. I mean, this uh, they are playing with people's ability to communicate. Uh, Department of Fire and Emergency Services in Western Australia has been silenced by Facebook. I mean, it is just beyond the pale what they have done. And um, like I say, I don't know how the government has uh, got to this point in their behind the scenes negotiations, but maybe whoever's mm. been leading the negotiations with Facebook, they need to shake things up a bit and just sort it out. Yeah, well, um, Josh Frydenberg, so uh, uh, JF texting MZ, but Jason Polinsky, do you have a message for? Mark Zuckerberg? Uh, well, um, I might regret this, but Mark, this is where you can put your like today. All right. Crass as ever. <laughs> Let's talk about a push within the coalition. I found this quite interesting. Uh, on a couple of things, and the Nat's pushing this mainly, but it's on nuclear power, Jason. So, according to the Australian, um, they asked, I think, about 80 or so coalition MPs. One said they'd be against at least having the option of nuclear power in Australia, everyone else either for it or undecided. Where do you sit? Uh, look, um, Tom, I think that it's quite clear that when you look at the scientific research that, you know, people who look at these numbers quite seriously, including Bill Gates, um, uh, make the point that if you want to shift the dial on global emissions, then uh, nuclear power has to be part of the mix and has to be under consideration. 
and I don't think that there's anyone or there would be very few people in this um, parliament who really care about um, climate change who wouldn't say that you need to have all options on the table. The other thing that you would need to make the point about is that there are a whole bunch of new technologies coming down the line with nuclear energy, including um, the one that I'm, I'm fascinated by, uh, which is um, by TerraPower, which is a wave reactor, which effectively at end of life has no waste and, mm. and has no emissions. Mm. And the worst thing that can happen is that it just shuts down. There are obviously so, modular reactors and other things of that yeah, nature. But, so this is the interesting part about the conversation, Patrick. Australians previously seem to decide their views on nuclear. Nuclear energy has changed. What's wrong with a conversation about this? Well, it's got to be a fact-based conversation, and I think the technology that Jason just mentioned is in the development stage. It is not something that can be rolled out in Australia in the next few years. Uh, and in terms of what we say about the global solution to climate change, I mean, let's be honest, Australia is a uh, uranium exporting nation. We do our bit for those nations that do need this sort of power or have indeed have nuclear reactors that already rely on this fuel to power communities, power nations. But is it the right thing for Australia? Is it what we should start building in 2021? I don't think so. And um, if the coalition wants to go to the next election promising 25 nuclear power stations across Australia, as Mr Howard did in 2007, well, good luck to them. Do you think this is going to be a concerted push the Prime Minister will take up, Jason? Um, I don't know, Tom, but I think that this... Uh, if you care about the outcome of our environment, if you care about slowing global warming, then you have to have every option on the table. And what we just heard from Patrick then is that the Labor Party will refuse to look at every option. Now, people who are not me, people who have looked at the facts, who have looked at the figures, who have de done deep dives on these issues, such as Bill Gates, for example, say that this is the only way for us mm. to proceed and has to be part of the mix. Mm. Why, if this is a... Um, if this is the once-in-a-lifetime challenge that it is, which Bill Gates said, which Kevin Rudd once described it, then why wouldn't you have every option on the table? This can only be ideological opposition. It's not based on facts. It's not based on science. It's just based on ideology. Interesting you start the argument with Jason, uh, people that are not when me, the Liberal Party... One. 30 seconds, Patrick Gorman. Jason, when the Liberal Party starts listening to Bill Gates on climate change, when you listen to him on net zero emissions, when you listen to him on investing, your, increasing your commitment to the aid budget, then maybe we can have a serious discussion about nuclear power. But don't use Bill Gates, who uh, has been a great advocate for so many things, uh, when you still got... You know, Bill, Bill Gates is an advocate for vaccinating the world. You guys have got Craig Kelly out there saying all sorts of interesting things about vaccinations. Uh, don't pick and choose uh, which bits of well, Mr. you can Gates talk about vaccinations, but we're talking about government. we're talking about global warming, which you know Kevin Rudd used to describe as the most important moral issue of our times. So why don't we stick to one challenge at a time um, when we're talking to Tom? And this is on um, global warming. And Bill Gates says that nuclear power has to be part of the mix and part of the discussion. All right. Why won't Labor come to the table on and that? We'll have to leave it there. I'm sure there'll be more discussions about vaccines down the track when Jason can give uh, his full and frank views on the member for Hughes. Patrick Possum and Jason Valinsky. I don't know your middle name, so you get your George. second name. George. There you go, Jason yeah. George. Talk to you again soon, gentlemen, and hope to see you in the flesh and enjoy that time with your family as well, Patrick. Thank